Alright, we're live. Hello, hello. Welcome on in to another Monday Live with the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we are joined by the amazing Donald Rance, uh, Irish whiskey lover uh, and enthusiast. And he, he is here to talk to us today about a whole bunch of different Irish whiskeys. Uh, I just got back from Matt's house and got myself a nice little spread of Irish. Um, and we're going to be drinking some yummy stuff and talking to the great Donald. Matt, who's in the chat with us tonight? Uh, before All right, I'm Donald see. The, the mic. All right, we've got Tom R. We got Wheels, Ben Demon Honor. Oh, thanks, Wheels. Also, your package arrived today with the two blind samples. Thank you very much. Uh, Jason Coates. We got Jason C., which is obviously the mashing drum. Uh, good to see you. Let's see here. Obviously, Donald's in there. Uh, yep. Mark JG, Charles Asper, Jeremy Burns. Let's see who else we got here. They were chatty there earlier. Ice House, Donner Pass Whiskey. Uh, no, this, there is no, no, the Peated Poop one is Floki, by the way, Donner Pass. That's what's, <laughs> which is Icelandic, not, not Irish. <laughs> yeah, it's funny though. Doug, uh, Chris Oak. Let's see. Spencer Mav, Killer Joe, William Whiskey Stalker. That must be a new one. Well, good to see you. I don't think I've seen that name before. Trey Coons, Lennox Cat. Let's see here. Uh, Michael J, Arthur Lopez. Let's see. All right. So I think that's everybody I can see so far. Of course, my thing likes to sometimes go slow. So let me reboot it, make sure they're missing. Oh, there we go. Got a few more. Oh, several more came in. Okay, we'll be back up here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bourbon Buddies. If you guys haven't checked out them, they're a cool channel too. Definitely check out the Bourbon Buddies. Uh, Santa Cruzan, Karen B. Ford, Patrick Fulmer. I think we got everybody. So, tonight is Irish night. And as we can Woo see, yes. And Donald is, if any of you guys have known, I know we, like, so we're in Discord all the time. We met Donald. He's been through our channel and I guess on Patreon originally, met Donald. But he's yeah. a Irish freaking expert and describes Irish like like no one else. So we thought it, no one better to have on. And he's actually writing a book on Irish whiskey too. So it's certainly an expert. So that's why we're having him on. So we're going to let him kind of take over and tell us about Irish whiskey this evening. So what would you like to start with, Donald? Uh, I'm starting with the Lord Lieutenant Kinahan's, the small right. batch. Mm. It does smell really, it smells buttery and delicious. The one I've got is from 2016, American Wood, non-chill filter, coming in at 46%, so. Yeah, bottling 11? Uh, this is batch three. I don't know where it says. Okay. Bottling, I don't think it's on the, so I'll see it on, let's put it that way. Yeah, I've got batch four, so. Okay. Yeah. So this stuff here, um, interestingly, uh, it's called Lord Lieutenant Kinahan's because uh, the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland at the time liked it so much that basically any whiskey produced from them, he wanted kept for him and his family. <laughs> so he basically kept all the whiskey and uh, wouldn't let anybody else have it. Stingy. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so they, uh, they gave it the appellation of the Lord Lieutenant Kinahan's Irish whiskey and it was the first Irish whiskey to have its trademark upheld in court in 1863 in Dublin. Cool. So, yeah. So, so what right. is the Lord Lieutenant anyway? Anybody who's not familiar with that term, what does that mean? So he was basically the governor of Ireland, basically the British governor. So, because at that time Ireland was part of uh, Britain up okay. until 1922, I believe. Okay. Makes so, sense, then. yeah. So what I love about this this whiskey, though, for a basic Irish blend, non-chill filtered, forty-six percent, uh, like buttered graham cracker and curd, like just wonderfully mm -hmm. fruity. And it's so rich and yeah. deep. It, it has a lot more flavor than I would ever expect out of something that I would consider, you know, a cheap or a, an intro. Yeah. Bargain. Yeah, the bargain one. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. The fruit on this just. Hits you right in the front of the palate. Yeah, I mean, it's just buttery smooth the rest of the way down. It's it's my favorite Irish blend to date. I mean, wow. If they continue to make you know stuff like this, and their ten year old is a crackerjack too, it's it's really good. But 
for my money, I actually prefer this to the 10 year old, just because as a daily sipper, it's beautiful. Matt, putting that bottle closer up to the screen so Sarah can kind of uh, take a look at it a little bit better. Well, you're doing that. Okay, so our buddy, Brian from Pit Face Barbecue, just joined the chat. And uh, so as you guys know, next Tuesday, the 28th Thank of you. January, we will be at Mirage Fine Spirits in Colleyville. Uh, Sagamore will be there, and we're going to be having the barrel pick <laughs> plus all the other Sagamore products at 7 p.m. Colleyville, the Mirage Fine Spirits. And Brian's going to be bringing barbecue for that night. So if you guys want to try his amazing barbecue and some amazing whiskey, it's going to be a fun night. So we hope everybody that's out and has never had a chance to meet us that's in the area and come out and do that next Tuesday. Let's see. Uh, I wish you she wines. Uh, I assume this is Sam. How's it going? I'm sure Bobby's doing his male modeling as usual. <laughs> yep. Uh, see? Is mm. it Sam? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, that's so, really good. What's the price point on this? Um, it wasn't much. I think I paid like thirty-five dollars for it. Oh come yeah. on! I've seen it on the shelf before, and always this kind of like beautiful for that price. Wonder about like, it. Eh, what the hell is it? The only reason I even got this because of Donald. I I never I know nothing about it. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, yeah, whatever. This some other crap. But no, it's actually really good. And if it wasn't for Donald, I wouldn't have it. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know at its price point, it's one of the best Irish that I've had. For so sure. Yeah, it's just like five bucks more than uh, you know. Uh, some of the uh, was it the black barrel Jameson for sure. So yeah, infinitely better. Infinitely better. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so much richer, so much more depth of flavors. Yeah, yeah. For sure. There's absolutely none of the metallic column still metallic no. notes yeah. in there. So that's because this is a blend of um, pot still and single malt. There you go. So mm. okay. So there's yeah. no, no no grain. Okay. No grain. Make that that's, explains that a lot then. Yeah. yeah. And, and at, at that price point, I mean, you're playing in the same level as Ryder's Tears because it's a similar blend and the Irishman. So you can't go wrong. Yeah. For well, sure. we actually got those as well. We'll, we'll kind of do a comparison here in a little bit, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. We got uh, Jay Chung join in, Whiskey Drover. How's it going, Tim? Mm. Uh, let's see mm. here. Who else we got that just joined? All good right. Catch. Awesome. <laughs> I don't think I missed anybody, I hope. So I think we're good. But yeah, if you want, we can certainly compare those two. So, and I know, because who makes Lord Lieutenant Hands anyway? Um, it's sourced. Uh, right now, it's okay. the Kinahan's Whiskey Company. Okay. But I would probably suspect it's coming from Cooley. Okay. That makes sense. Just because whenever you see an Irish whiskey that's sourced and it comes out at 40%, most times it's Bushmills. Right. And anything above most times it's coolie or somebody else ah, makes sense kind of a rule of thumb so okay. you said stuff. the irishman yeah the irishman is a blend that's a 70 30 blend of pot still to single malt and this one's only bringing in at 40 percent yeah that and i think they chill filter it as well mm. i mean i would think so with that at that proof yeah so Ah, Steve A joined. There's the other person. I knew somebody else would join. <laughs> There's He's drinking thought. some red. Yeah, so I guess everybody in the chat here for Irish night. So what are you guys drinking? What Irish whiskey is everybody drinking this evening? Oh, and then Writer's Tears. Is that the other one you said? Yeah, so I guess let's get them yeah. out and let's throw a little in here and compare. Because I know that Irishman and Writer's Tears are made by Walsh. But yeah. obviously these are stores, so they've only been around, I think, since, what, 2016? Is that right? As far as Walsh? Uh, yeah, as far as Walsh goes, um, they're starting to make their own stuff now. Um, but uh, they do the uh, the uh, Irishman, they do Writer's Tears, and really, uh, they're starting to really play around with different casks for Writer's Tears. Like, they have a Mizanara cask they just brought out. Ooh, that sounds tasty. And uh, they also have a... Um, Marsala cask that they just brought out as well too. Ooh, that sounds awesome. So Am I yeah, the forty percent riders tears. Uh, yeah, forty percent on that. On that, yeah, both the Irishman and, and Rider tears are both forty percent. They kind of dribbled on you. Yeah, so we got people are drinking Makes here. Fun. Let's see, Bushmills so ten, small batch, so Red Breast the Stout, Red Breast Twelve, Red Breast Trash yeah. Strength. What else we got here? Maybe he thinks there's some yellow spot later. The there you go. The end was a triple still. That's always a good one. That works. Uh, let's see what else. I have red spot in here. 
<laughs> Sam's also, drinking Costco uh, vodka. Red, because what else yellow, is it? <laughs> hey, Eric Evans, I'm good to see you. <laughs> that was in that box that he went in the road double cask. Uh, let's see here. All good stuff. So that's pretty funny. This one's more. Well, yep. I'm sure there's Irish vodka out there. I don't ever had Irish vodka, but I'm sure it tastes the same. I'm just going to tell me. I think um, it would likely be made from potato. I would think. I would think. I'd be disappointed if it wasn't. Yeah. What's Tell them more, dude. This Irish is an Irishman. And you got a buddy in here, John Fan. Um, yeah. From your buds there, Donald. Hey, John. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that does look more metallic. Mm. So let's see. I agree compare. with William. The, the Irishman tastes more metallic. Writer's Tears is nice and fruity. Sam's gonna find us. Yeah, the Writer's Tears is nice and is nice and fruity, but it doesn't have that buttery smooth and that that graham cracker that um, mm -hmm. the first yeah. one really did remind me of a graham cracker with butter spread yeah. on it, just kind of as a as a snack. That was just mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You're right. I like the Writer's Tears though. Hands way better. I like I like the Killahan. Killahan. Well, I really like that one. That one's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. I've got. The single malt and the twelve year single malt as well, the Irishman, but they're not open. They're in the other room hanging out. Yeah, the the twelve year Irishman is is a decent dram. I mean, it's it's good. I just I think some of the the Irish whiskey makers right now are trying to capture the the market mm -hmm. while it's yeah. still hot and rushing things out. Like mm -hmm. Teeling, Teeling is one that strikes me because they just released their pot still in the U.S. in New York. 75 us dollars for a four-year-old pot still i mean come on really yeah that's expensive when i can get red breasts for less yeah. and, and the 12 whole, years old yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yeah and and the whole thing is irish pot stills really need a lot of time to age like at least seven eight years yeah because they come out of the stills apparently very rough so but yeah i'm I'm not a fan of some of the trends I'm seeing in Irish whiskey right now. Just uh, this kind of push to, to get it out there so it'll sell while the market's hot. Yeah. So, but there are other, you know, other producers doing great things. Like, I, I can't wait to see what Waterford does. With I was just about to say the oh, same yeah, thing. Waterford looks yeah. so interesting. I'm really yeah. excited about them. Me too. I want to know if they're going to put blends out there where they're going to blend different farms or if they're actually going to do farm expressions, which is I, I, I can't I can't wait for all yeah. of the different options they're going to have to do things with. All right. Yeah. Yes. We have a question from Michael Jays. Is mm. 21 year restaurants at worth the total wine price of $299? I think so, but it's that is not the cheapest i've seen it cheaper but that's not the most expensive i've seen it so it's kind of no. in the middle wow it's so bloody expensive in the u.s because the normal retail here is like 240 canadian oh jeez so, and that, that sounds that sounds to me a little bit more reasonable donald i'd put that at the 170 to 200 dollar mark is what i feel like uh, i would want to pay us for that yeah i mean sometimes it would just kind of have to go hmm I don't think I should be spending that on that whiskey. Yeah, I, I to me, there's just a point of diminishing returns after a hundred, and sometimes, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it really, really has to be something special to get past that point of diminishing return because there are so many amazing whiskeys at that hundred dollar price point. Absolutely, it is expensive. It, it is really good. I mean, you won't be disappointed. It just is. It unfortunately is expensive. Yeah. yeah. That is the only problem with it, but yeah, I, I do really like the red breast oh, wow. a lot, but it's expensive. Yeah, see, he says three thirty nine for red breast twenty one, where Steve A's at. So I get it. Yeah. Um, wheels, we do have the double oak riders here, so we will let you know later this evening. I actually haven't gotten to try that one yet because it's not out here yet. So oh, okay. Well, looking forward to that. It's a toss up between these two. The riders tears. Yeah. Definitely not the the Irish, you know. It's not yeah, bad. It's, it's not bad. It just reminds Irish. me of Sexton. Kind of does remind me of Sexton. Except Sexton's a single malt. Still's got that nasty yeah. metallic yeah. note, though. Yeah. Amen. 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 You can well. call it a single malt all you want, but that doesn't make it yeah. any better. Mm -mm. 
That and I'll tell you, I was not a big fan of Sexton at all. It kind of fell flat for me, and yeah. In the beginning of the I journey? like I like the very beginning of the bottle of Sexton. Yeah. Yes. The first then, like, three pours of Sexton are delicious. Yeah. And, and then, then afterwards, after just like falls off a cliff. Mm, yep. What happened to this bottle? Yep. Yeah. I've had that experience. Like, no. Yep. Well, the pro the solution is just drink it really fast. That's oh, what I think. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I drink like three bottles. This, this is what actually got me back into Irish whiskey was Sexton. Because, yeah. you know, it's under $25. Comes in this cool shaped bottle. And it's a single malt. So I started a bar for like, I don't know, six bucks to try it. And I was like, that's pretty good. And so, yeah, I've been to like three bottles of it. But I haven't had it in probably a year at least now until tonight. I went through so, two bottles of it. The first bottle I had, tasty. I really enjoyed and I drank it really quickly. And the second bottle, I had the first couple of pours out of it, and I liked it, and I went back to it, and it was just like, oh, this is metal. What can I mix this with to make it go way faster? Yeah. Whiskey-wise, like, we we don't... I make blends. Yeah, we make blends. I don't what actually mix. What can I blend mix, it with? But I mix. With him, it was... Wasn't that the time that you had the bottle of the peat monster, and you were putting drops of peat monster and everything? Yep. To... <laughs> that, that sounds like, pretty like cool. Like, literal two milliliter, like little squirts of uh of peat monster just like the tiniest amount of peat monster into uh, a one ounce pour would have been cool. just plenty so you just poured uh sex to name that yeah so i'm gonna pour some of this west cork glen gareth bog oak all right so, so what, what does that mean as far as the so basically uh they took uh oak trees that were in the glen gareth forest oak or okay. in the bog sorry and uh they used the, the wood from them to make barrels to finish the whiskey in. Okay. And they charred the living hair, hell out of the barrels, like basically burned them. And it gives this whiskey such an oily, meaty quality that's just, oh, man, I love it. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah, I've never seen that one. The only thing I've ever seen here is the bourbon cask and the, uh, the ten years. It's the ones I've ever been able to get a hold of here. Mm. Yeah. All right, I can pour some of the regular. Right, the, the bourbon bourbon cask. Cask. Did I give you this one? Well, I can't remember. The regular West Cork bourbon cask. Cool. Um, I don't remember writing West Cork. But we are going to try real quick since we really enjoyed the first writer's tears. Oh, that's not. I have another writer's tears in here somewhere. Oh, the double oak. Double oak. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and pour that one. You have my car? Yeah, go ahead and pour that one. <laughs> Okay, so Eric Evanson wants to know, your question for Donald is, what are your thoughts on Irish distillery going away from the traditional triple distilling? Well, not everybody in Ireland uh, triple distills. It, it, it's way more common than elsewhere, but when you look at, like, Cooley, uh, the whole Turconnell range is double distilled. Yeah. And there are, there are other producers that are doing just yeah. double distilled. So... Personally, it doesn't matter as long as the end product is good. You know what I mean? That's a good point. That's yeah. very true. Really yeah, good. So we totally agree on that. Yeah, it's it. It is a way more common thing in Ireland and used to be in the lowlands of Scotland. But either way, I'm good. Yeah, that's true. Like Aachen Potion. Yeah. yeah. Matt. Yes. Did you really not put any red breast in here? Not my fault. Your husband poured stuff. He oh, chose. You're dead to me. <laughs> For the rest of the world. You have all the red breast you need right back there if you it's want to dig into them. not all I need. <laughs> They're samples. Them, which is what I would have gotten from that. If you want to dig into them, you already have them. <laughs> what are you going to do? Tell them to drive back down here and pick you some up? No, I'm just not going to share with them. Um, mm. Ooh, that's crazy, Ben, that they want $60 Canadian for, for Sexton. Sexton, no. yeah. Yeah, ooh, they do. Nuts. Ooh. I think I paid like 20 bucks for the bottle. 25 is the highest I've ever seen it. That's crazy. It's it's more expensive than Bushmills 10 here, which is why I'm just like, hell no. Oh, for that price? Oh, the answer is hell no. That's insane. Yeah, so, it's, oh, not that's that good. it's not there. that good of a single malt to... No, not at all. Uh, okay, trick to no. Do I have the green spot Chateau Lou? We want Barton. I don't have the Barton. I just have the Chateau Montalena. Mm -hmm. I have a. It's yeah. freaking awesome. I have a sample of the Leaville Barton here. 
because I had a pub owner that took mercy on me and provided yeah, me with a sample. We tried back to back at the vault, and the Montalena was so much better. Well, not well. It was so much more our palate. Yeah, for me. Let's not let's not say better, but it was it was so much different, and it was so much more our palate. Yeah, the Montalena. Eh? Yeah, the Zinvendel casks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. It's, I like it. I have to. I have to say the Leoville Barton was my favorite because yeah. I, I just found that it presented like um, custard and all sorts. It was just so good. Yeah. I like Zin barrels. Um, I like what they can do to whiskey. I want more people to experiment with Zinfandel because it has a real fun black pepper ding to it. Um, and then also Zinfandel can present itself uh, with... Um, almost a Worcestershire sauce note uh, yeah. in wines. And that's a really, really fun note to kind of transition into whiskeys. Uh, and then the, both Zinfandel and Syrah can get this uh, deep blueberry pie note that uh, I just love. And so when that can kind of transition, I, I love it. And I also find that uh, with the, like the green spot, uh, it presents like marzipan for days on the mm. nose with the Zinfandel wine influence. So I've got some here that I guess we'll pour after. Mm. I, I will say with, with this uh, West Cork, if you are a fan of meat smoke, like that intense meat smoke, you're going to love this. Because it's basically like meat smoke met vanilla and honey. Mm. Really interesting, but really good too. That sounds really good. Yeah, I'm really enjoying going through this bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this writer's tears, this double oaked, bumps up to forty six percent. Yeah. Now it is the like it. triple distilled non shell filtered, but this one has American oak and then it's fin and then it's uh, French oak cognac casks. So that's an interesting combo on this thing. It, this is significantly better than the regular writer's tears. Yeah. Uh, Price isn't yeah. much different though. Price I would is say pretty close. Definitely more uh, rich and deep and full of uh, different flavors. It has a lot more going on. Mm. Yeah, I like that one. Mm -hmm. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so if you guys are... The regular writer's tears for sure. I'll show you the bottle once again. Keep an eye out for it. And this is what it looks like. Okay. Oh, definitely have to look for that. It sounds really good. Yeah, it's... Yeah. The problem is it's very hard to find West Cork in general. I've only, I think, found one store that ever had a bottle here. And the other bottle I got came from Waco. It's some tiny store down in Waco, which is like an hour and a half south of here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not fast, you drive. And then uh, Eric Evanson wants to know, have you tried the Kilbegan rye at all, Donald? I have not because uh, I haven't seen it on the shelves here yet. Mm -hmm. But that one is a really interesting whiskey because it's not a rye in the traditional sense. Okay. It's actually an historic Irish pot still. So oh. the current technical file for Irish pot stills uh, specifies that you have to have minimum 30% uh, either malted or unmalted barley in there and oh. up to 5% of another grain. So it could be oats, could be corn, could be whatever. The Kilbegan rye uses 30% rye on top of a pot still. So like they were doing in the Victorian era okay. before they long before they published the current technical file. It's so only 30% rye? Yeah, I believe so. Something like that. That thing tastes 95.5, right? Like, that tastes like bullet I rye. like that one it a lot. Is yeah. Rye. Yeah, they, they basically did a, a, an historic style pot still with it. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, because we got that one from somebody at the Bass. I know it's at you guys' house, that one. Um, I like that one a lot. I think it's really good, that Kilbegan rye. Yeah, that one's not going anywhere. I don't tap into that one, Matt, where you're safe. Yeah, so I figured that's why I was like, I don't have to worry about that bottle. The other ones we have to keep here because William will drink them all. I really <laughs> want That's really sad. I'm hey. not a saver. I'm a sipper. That's right. It's uh, it's Pat from my Whiskey Denzin. How's it going? How you doing, Pat? Um, we're actually going to have Pat on our show next Monday. Yay. Talking about Midwest whiskeys, so that should be fun. Cool. Yeah, we don't tend to see a lot of those uh, whiskeys here. I mean, 
we just started having stuff like Stranahan's show up and uh, mm. High West. Okay. So, yeah. Now, do they charge a fortune for those there? Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. They're not that expensive here at all. Yeah, I think one of the Stranahan's is like a hundred bucks. Oh gosh, no. So, it's not. It's not worth that. That's no, right right I think the regular the Stranahan's is like fifty bucks. The black I think is like the black dime is like sixty, something like that. They're not expensive. Five or something. Somewhere yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, I think sixty-two is what we typically pay for, and the diamond is, to me, worth sixty-two. It's a fun. Agree. Significantly better. One. I do yellow. not think the yellow is worth a hundred dollars. I don't think the yellow is worth fifty. I think the black's my favorite. I have the sherry cast too, but I think the black's the best one. The sherry yeah. cast one's funky. It's weird as hell. Cool. Yeah, it it goes uh, into the way funky sherry notes. Yeah. It's well, and the yellow, really like. the yellow has just got young funk taste on it and mm -hmm. the finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Black's where it's at. Yeah, okay. the black actually is in the same. What ballpark? It's playing the same sport as Brook Lot at Classic Lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. It's not. It's not. You know the same thing, but it's playing the same sport. It's it's along know. the same lines. Right. Okay. Eric also wants to know, Donald, what is your favorite bottom shelf Irish? So I think we started with it. We started with one of them for sure. Uh, another one is uh, the Jameson Crested. I love it. It's. Okay. Uh, got a much higher pot still content than uh, all the other Jemison products. Okay. So, and uh, of course, I like the uh, Bushmills Black Bush as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, let's okay. do that one. I have that one. Blue, yeah. Bushmills Black Bush. I got. I got a little sample of that guy. Hey, cool. hey Ben Stahl, how's it going? Good to see you. All right. Yeah, we can pull the Black Bush. <laughs> this is the old tin Black Bush. Yeah. So this bottle is actually quite a bit older. So I got this as a gift for help my aunt and uncle out, and I get the bottle. It's like half full. Like <laughs> got a so, hand-me-down bottle. A used like, bottle. Uh, I'll take it. I don't have it in my collection, so I'm like, yeah, I'll definitely take it. Just yes. about it. It's free whiskey. So you're likely going to get older stuff in that older bottling than you would with the current stuff. That's kind of what I'm figuring out. So I need to get like a mini bottle of the newer one and compare it. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's this is super aged, pretty. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. aged exclusively in sherry, uh, ex sherry yeah, yeah. barrels. So, that'll do yeah. it. No wonder I like the smell. The smells way better. Yeah. Yeah. I like sherry I'm not. Things. I'm not getting a lot of almond. Do we know what type of sherry? I don't know. I I would. Hazard to guess, likely Oloroso, Oloroso, since yeah, that seems to be the direction most Irish distillers take. Okay, because I have never, to my knowledge, I've never seen one finished in a PX cask or any other kind of uh, sherry in we Ireland. Have, we have one finished in a D, in a, in a PX, the Dun. Oh, nice. Oh, right. Yes, Northern Ireland. Yeah, uh, that's right. But yeah, I think you're right. Most of them are. Where is this? <clears throat> I don't know. Where's the model? I will say that uh, Dunville's made one of the most disappointing whiskeys I've had uh, in the last little while. Their their Three Crowns peated whiskey was just flat and boring. Oh, that's too bad to hear. Yeah. The only ever had is that 10 year PX cast Dunville, one of God. Yeah. Oh, yes. I have had this. Have you had this slain before, is what Trey wants to know? Irish. Slain, yeah, I've had slain Irish whiskey. It's okay. Yeah, it's so, fine. It's, you know, 25 30 bucks. Yeah, that's about yeah. what it's worth. So It's just like the Silky. That's another one of those blends that come out at 40%, and it's fine. There's nothing to dislike about it, but there's nothing to write home about either. Totally agree. Uh, good night, Michael J. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. But yeah, right. Trey, if you're, look, if you're interested in trying it, I've got a ball. I know you live close by, so if you want to try it before you buy it, come try it. If not, it's 25, 30 bucks. It's decent. Oh, it's worth about that. That's the right price. But it's nothing you're going to be like blown away by. If I was going to go with the bottom shelf, best bottom shelf for me is probably uh, the Whistler. The freaking Whistler whole series is amazing. Yeah. There's like six or seven different Whistlers now. And the most expensive one is 60 bucks. The cheapest one's like 28. It's delicious. Yeah. 
That's right. Yeah. I get cheap stuff. Yeah, I get like two gingers or uh, patties. And neither one of those are actually bad. They're both drinkable. Yeah. Especially the great, patties. Yeah. So my next pour, guys, I'm going to uh, do the Teeling Stout Cask. Mm. I adore this stuff. Just, mm. oh, yeah. We don't have Just. We don't have yeah. a, uh, Julie, I, I haven't seen that one yet. It sounds like something that I would really like. Because I know in I February we're going to have Teeling on, so that I should be like fun. Teeling. So, Steve, maybe Julian can get us some. We'll have to see. And some. <laughs> bring the barley wine, too. Okay, I'll ask to see what he can get a hold of for us that he can get from Ireland. At the yes, very least. every everything he can get, Matt. Bring us all the tealing, Julian. Yeah, the, including the twenty four again. Including the twenty four. Yeah, always want the twenty four. That's yeah. Kind of, that that may be one of the best beers we had last year by far. That twenty four. Um, yeah, that was a highlight of my year. That was freaking awesome. Yeah, the tealing barley wine is also awesome. The barley wine finish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like an Ovaltine biscuit. Ooh. Just so, oh yeah. Just yeah. really, ah. Oh. Sounds good. Yep. Ben says like neither one of those are, too. unfortunately, U.S. releases. I really like this one. Close. The Black Bush? The Black Bush is really nice. You said they have a one called the Red Bush that's uh, exclusively bourbon as well? Yeah, it's nice. okay. It's, yeah, that's fine. I <laughs> m- much prefer the... the the black bush, though. So. Not just for the fruit, but for the complexity of flavor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I kind of figured. So. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I like you tried, it. Was, I guess, is it, I don't know if it's going to be 18-year. I assume it's 18-year. Renaissance at all, Donald? Ben wants to know. Uh, no, I haven't yet. I haven't seen it here. Uh, I have been keeping an eye out for it. But first, I've got to go and pick up uh, the barley wine finish and the uh, strong ale finish, because uh, I have two bottles of those coming in. So they should be here probably in the next month or so. So fingers crossed. Oh man, I guess Master Jason, the Master Drum says we're getting lot forty castrate finally, but of course it's the NAS version. Yeah, cool. and you're. Take it. 50 cases going to Massachusetts and Illinois. Oh. So. Well, then, all right, then. I guess our friends in those two states, we're going to need you to uh, help when's us it out. Coming to Ma- when's it going to Massachusetts? I think it's very soon. There hasn't been a, a an actual date. I mean, Dr. Don Livermore announced it on Trenny and C's live stream uh, or, or on Trenny and C's uh, channel. Okay. So, yeah. I am not a big fan of the uh, NAS I something missing and yeah. The, I mean, I'm just uh, saying that in Massachusetts in May, so yeah. That's yeah. Right. Ben, you going to Julio's Liquors? They, I wonder if they're getting. He's probably right. They probably are getting some. And I know that uh, Bill the Whiskey Dick shops there. We have to have Bill help us out. And I think I've heard uh, Benny's in Chicago is getting it. Okay. So, yeah. We friends there too. We could hit up. So. Hey, my dear, thanks for coming in. This Eric, oh, here we go. Eric wants to know what the difference between all the Bushmills releases. So, you've got the Bushmills White Label, which is just their basic um, blend, which is grain and single malt. And you have the Red Bush, which is a bit older single malt and grain blended in, that's finished exclusively in bourbon casks. Black Bush is finished exclusively in sherry. Then you've got your 10-year-old single malt. The 16 is finished in bourbon sherry, or aged bourbon sherry, and I think pork. And the 21 is Madeira uh, on top of uh, bourbon and sherry. So, yeah. And there's a whole, oh, I have a couple of Cracker Jacks behind me, Madeira finish. Just insanely good. I do love the Madeira finish. It's one of my favorites as far as mm-hmm. finishes in the whiskey go in general. Mm. For sure. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll be getting to that 21 year Bushmills at some point tonight. I dug that puppy out. This Teeling Stout cask, if you like um, rich, creamy uh, layers on top of like a, a lemon curd, 
with spice? Just yes, please. Well, we do have the Whistler Imperial Stout cask. We can pour that. We can see if uh, if yeah, this yeah. maybe compares. I think this was like <laughs> yeah, yeah. $32, dollars comes in at forty three percent. Now this was interesting. This is non non natural color, non chill filtered at forty three percent. So this should be interesting. Powers does that as well with their gold okay. label blend. So at forty three. That's a Powers Gold label too. That's a great intro Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. Ooh, absolutely, I do like Powers a lot. Weird. Powers is quite good. It's got a weird nose. It does have a funky nose on it. Yeah, but it's a stout nose. Yeah. I don't want to call that funky. I want to call that like stout. It smells like a stout beer. So what's it? Compare this to the Jameson version to the Guinness one. <laughs> Do we have the Jameson? No. Well, no, we don't have any left. Nope. I drink it all. I have it. It's in the box over there. The Jameson is much lighter than this. Yeah, on the, on the stout. Hmm. On the nose, at least. I have to say, my, my favorite Jameson cask mates was the uh, LCBO exclusive one we had here um, made in um, X uh, beer barrels from Bose Brewery in Ottawa. Yeah. It was uh, finished in uh, X red irish ale barrels and it was Ooh. really fruity and malty oh, that sounds really cool. good yeah it's got kind of a little bit of a funk on the aftertaste yeah this is not my favorite front of the palate mid palate not weird. bad but the, the the finish there it's got a little funk mm -hmm. i mean it's not horrible i wouldn't turn it down yeah it's, it's different that's for sure so it does it have kind of the what you would call the dry Dublin stout notes, like that kind of dry maltiness, or is it more of a sweet? No, it's like, a dry maltiness, dry. and I would say this is more like barnyard floor dry maltiness. Yeah, yeah. it's very dry. So, so this, probably this has yeah. a, a a cow funk component to it. Right? Like <laughs> oh, it tells you where it came from. It came from a uh, sheep pasture. O y n e brew house imperial stout. This mix with Floki. Oh, Floki. seriously, Matt, did you did you mix in Floki with this? Does that no? <laughs> you trying to get me to drink it? No, nope, it says it is a blend of <laughs> Irish malt and grain whiskeys, which bestow deeper roasted notes of coffee and cacao nibs. Which I do get those both on here. Yeah, but it, that is a weird nose. Alec Granger. Yeah, uh, I'm know. getting I'm getting notes of Floki, like serious barnyard fun. I have the Floki. We can compare no, the Floki later. No. It's not Floki nose. <laughs> it's, I haven't tasted the Floki, but I know. You know I, you I remember the it. smell. Sarah, you might actually be right on that. It's not Floki yeah. nose. It's close. What in my class? Hmm. Ass hat. <laughs> so, let's see here. Uh, what's the question? Somebody had a question about where the hell did it go? Oh, how was the green spot compared to red breast? I personally like red breast better, but what do you think, Donald? I'm on the fence with that. I, mm -hmm. It's my favorite style of whiskey. And mm. uh, the yeah. pot stills. And I have to say, they're both at 40, they're both chill filtered, and it just depends on my mood. Sometimes okay. I want. Sometimes I really want uh, that clean surgical presentation that you get in Green Spot, where every flavor is very orderly and very well defined. And sometimes right. I just want that cherry richness in the in the red breast. So I, I yeah, one hundred percent agree with you on that. I, I I lean towards red breast every time. I like the spots. But like, to me, uh, the richness yeah. of red breast. You it's, said the word right there, the richness of it. The it's richness, really the, yeah. the depth. The no, I'm 100% with you, Donald. It depends on my mood. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes I want that very fresh, very clean green apple. I want that, you know, almost uh, mm -hmm. that kind of coconut and caramel. And, and right. the way they're presented in Green Spot is very cleanly defined. It's, it's basically... I would imagine as if the Germans made a, an Irish whiskey. It's yeah, so precise and clean. I'm pouring so, a green spot. Let's see. Yeah. And see, mm. for me, it's it's. If I'm gonna reach for a red breast, I'm gonna reach for a cast strength. So it's a different beast together, anyway. If I want, you know. Most times, I when I reach for, yeah, because for red breast for me, when I reach for it, I usually go for the 
Mostel or the 21. Mm -hmm. I mean, can't go wrong with any of them, really. No, no. So, yeah. I completely agree with that. So you've got green spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to join the High Proof Horror Brigade. Woohoo! Just, there we go. Just point at number 15. So here okay. we go. West Cork cask strength at 62%. Oh, so I grabbed something else, though. I, I can't remember if I gave any Sarah this the other day, that special red breast. Oh, the 14. I, I just poured the last little bit of the 15 that I have of the red breast. And we'll compare that to the different spots. Yeah, we'll get oh, the. I have a little bit more of the 15. Oh, yeah. Long time ago, I picked up a little three pack that had these little tiny bottles. Yep. Did I give you any of this one at all, Sarah? The other day when you guys were here, this one. I can't Very remember. nice. This is a batch B. I got a batch no, A too. Not. Okay. Well, I'll have to give you something. You'll love this one. Mm. This is batch B, uh, bottle 101 of 252. And it is 57.2, so 114.4 proof. Yeah, He's so. Duckin holding out on me. That one was not I, out there for me to choose from. I forgot about it. So I can I tell you. The other day, though. That uh, of the uh, limited release, uh, the two batches that have interested me the most are B and D. Okay. Just because of how they uh, describe them. Uh, and it'd be very interesting to see how that compared to the 12 yeah, cask yeah. strength. Mm -hmm. For sure. We will have to do that right now. Yeah. I will let you know. Rub it in our face. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. No, you're not. Please don't be. No, you're not. You didn't even send any, any Red Breast home. I showed it to you the other day. Hey, I put Red Breast 21 on the counter. Not my fault. He didn't choose it. <laughs> That's, that is a, not my fault. Hey, oh. Patrick Cohen. Good to see you. Thankfully, I have a sample of the Red Breast one. I've been coveting it. We do have that Dreamcast 32 year, too. Yeah, but oh. we're not supposed to drink that. No, we're saving that for review. We're not uh -huh. drinking that one. That one's, hit, that one's put away. We got enough to do a review. That's all that matters on that one. We yeah. did try it on the stream with Brad, and it is glorious. So what, yellow spots the 12 year? 12 year finished in Malaga wine casks or partially aged in uh, Malaga wine casks. So Matt, what red breast did you just pull out? That, this one here is the 12 year cast trying to compare. Oh, okay. What's the one in the bag? That's the 14 year cast strength, that special batch B small. This is the small batch cast strength. Did you have a thumb? They're only, um, I guess, only a few hundred bottles are made of each, a couple hundred of each batch are made. How long have you had that? Um, not that long. When did I get this? A few months. I showed it to you, though. Who's writing with that? That's your writing. That's my writing. You got this from Matt. Okay, I, I know I gave you that. some the other day, like maybe no, two, this three is, weeks ago. No, this has been sitting back in the corner for a while. Well, he says two, three weeks. That's probably, probably two or three months. You gotta think Matt fine. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> it all runs together at this point. <laughs> There's a lot of whiskey that happens here. I don't know. Let's just call it in the last year. Yeah. It makes it easy. Pretty safe. Can we chair? Sure. So I can tell you that this West Cork is uh, quickly becoming one of my favorite cask strength Irish. Okay. Just yeah. Because the value on this is incredible. I paid, what, 50 bucks Canadian for it. Easy. So, yeah, for for a sixty two percent cask strength Irish whiskey. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'll take that deal. Hmm. Yeah, but you are what about like a uh, fifteen to twenty percent more than us? It's uh, yeah, the um, the dollar is about twenty five percent less, twenty five yeah, thirty percent no less. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's an incredible price. That means that's what forty four, forty six dollar price. Come on. Yeah, or less even. Or less. So, yeah. Yeah. There's more oh, fruit on the 12-year. The 14 year? The 14 year? Yeah. Ooh, that's glorious. 
Mm. It's it's quite warming though. Yeah, it, it was, well, not for me. <laughs> that's that's yep. a part. I don't think there's much fruit on the 14 year though as is on the 12 year cast strain, which is interesting. I don't know. I get a lot of fruit off of it. I get more on the nose than I do on the palate, but. You, do you ever find with the 15, because whenever I drink the 15, I'm instantly transported to thinking of a Christmas plum pudding when I'm drinking it. Because it, for me, out of all of the, the red breast expressions, that one has the, that kind of preserved plum uh, taste to it. And if you've ever seen when they flambe the uh, Christmas uh, plum puddings, it's awesome. So Sounds good. Yeah. I don't know, so I've never had plum pudding, so I don't really I know can, if I could say. No, but I I can get plum on that, like just the, the dark fruit. Here, try. That's a 15. I'm still waiting for the finish to finish on the 14. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, Which one did over. you drink? <laughs> the 14. The 14 oh. year calf strength from Red Breast was just good God. That was amazing. That'll be a fun review to do. Finish to finish on that. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So I'm pulling out my consolation prize for the LCBO royally screwing up my Middleton order. So mm -hmm. I had to settle for some of this. Settle? Yeah. yeah That's oh, so good. Yeah. This is a serious box. Like, it comes in a wood frame and everything. Like, look. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. wow. So... Yeah, a nice display. It is. So, you know, it's interesting. Nobody but the Irish do display boxes like that. That I found. That's true, actually. Yeah, because you look at the Middleton boxes. They're they're, go similar. they're gorgeous. Yes, oh, they are. Yeah, they're definitely some of the nicest boxes in whiskey for sure. Yeah. And if you yeah, have, what well, I know is that rider stairs. I know Brad let us try that okay. cast strength one. We'll get a review on that the, one, dude. The boxes oh, from so America, good. like Booker's, and you're like, oh God, what? Plexiglass? Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, for real, right? In the Booker's ones, yeah. It's like, yeah, these are the and nice opening. Fans. They've got metal freaking brackets that keep it on there. Yeah. Seriously, right? You got sliding plexiglass, exactly. Yeah, and we got we got Booker's that's kind of glued together and, you know, plexiglass yeah. front. Uh huh. Yeah, uh huh. Hey, yeah, news. and I've seen lots of bookers here recently, but I'm not going to pay the price for it because it's like a hundred and something Canadian, and I'm just no. like, nope. Yeah, no totally thanks. Hey. Yeah, unfortunately, the price of bookers in general has gone way up in the last year. Depends on places. the batch, I suppose. You should get it for like fifty-five dollars, but some some places are selling for almost a hundred now. Wow. Wow. Crazy. Brian, <laughs> you're offending Brian. Stop. <laughs> hey, don't worry. You should see how many empty boxes Brian has of Booker's. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna smoke an entire uh, barbecue just with Booker's boxes. Yes. <laughs> I could probably at one point in time I could probably start a funeral, uh, you know, business for canaries with those Middleton boxes. Just sell them <laughs> to people to bury their birds. It's <laughs> fantastic. Hey, you know what? That's a pretty dang nice casket for a yeah, bird. Yeah, for real, right? Exactly. Like that's a that's a two hundred three hundred dollar casket for a bird. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. That's nice so, stuff. Yep. High quality wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, bookers. That's I guess I guess like Ben saying that the limited edition bookers are like one forty one. That's true. Now if we can only find mm. a rye for that price. Oh. Yeah, I still have yeah. yet to try Booker's Rye. I've heard magical things, but... It's magical. I don't know, man. This Rider's Tears cask strength yeah. Yellow is spot. just such an apple and... Oh, yeah. Just... Now, imagine... Have you ever done having this before? Uh, no, I've had a couple of the other ones. Uh, it was on my actual Christmas whiskey list. Oh, nice. Because... So I was like, okay, I'll stick with the list. If I can't get the the middle, then I'll have this. So, yeah, I call it a win. Yeah. So, I would not be sad about that. No, I'm definitely not. I'm going to really enjoy getting through this bottle. Maybe too much. Absolutely. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Paul shot off. I got red spot going next. I forgot how good that spot was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the yellow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the yellow spot is really an interesting one for me because whenever I, whenever I have it, I immediately think of spiced banana bread and a sweet it's, red pepper jelly. It does Ooh. have kind of a banana taste to it. Um, I like it. It smells good. I am at, I am at, yeah, I imagine, you know, I'm having the spiced banana bread with sweet red pepper jelly. I don't know why, but that's where my brain goes. So. We have the double oak, right? Yep. Now, which is your favorite spots besides the, of the, the regular three that you can get, Donald? Uh, probably the yellow. Me too. You put that yeah. over red? I like it better than the red. I don't know why. I just find that this is just more fruity. The red just seems kind of muted compared to the yellow for me. Yeah. I was also the red is a little disjointed at times. I find, whereas you get a more cohesive experience with the yellow. That's what so, I. So, yeah. And how cool is it that you're using Malaga wine? And what kind of wine is that? Uh, it's a Spanish wine. Ooh, okay. Uh, Four of these. You just poured a whole bunch of Hey, and the Rock Out Reviews in. How's it going, Ed? Share that one now. Good to but see. I want to pour all three spots just so we can compare them. Yeah. And I DJ mean, One One's here. How's it going? You're just moving right along. I don't have uh, my... Uh, I need leftover spots. My three spots uh, close by. They're all in the uh, closet right now. It's a good place for them. It's all good. For, that's where mine usually hang out is the closet. I almost never drink these, to be real so, honest. All right, I'm going to pour something that's pretty significant in my whiskey mm -hmm. journey. All so right. this is where it all started for me, and I always have a bottle of this on hand. Oh, and, that's a good one. Yeah, and I was 19 at the time, and it was <laughs> gifted as a Christmas gift for me from my grandmother. Very nice. Yeah. That's a nice Christmas gift. Yeah, so my first bottle of single malt was a... Christmas gift from my grandmother of Bushmills 10. And what a great grandmother. Right? I've had it ever since. I always keep a bottle of it on hand. Awesome. And I absolutely yeah. just adore the way you get that milk chocolate note in the middle pa mid palate of this stuff. Yeah, it, it just shows up. How much better that is over regular Bushmills. Yeah, night and day, and even at 40%. I yeah, mean, true. if if they did this at forty six or cask strength, can you imagine how mind blowing that would be? It really would be. I wish they would. Like the quality of the quality of the malt is second to none. Yeah. So. All yeah, right. Even the twenty ones at forty percent. It's like all of them. All of them. Like, they, why don't you guys make something like you said, cask strength? Would be an awesome thing to have. You know, they really infuriate me that way. They are so conservative. They don't even do 43. They don't do... It's just like, okay. Yeah. It's, it's like being an underwear maker and deciding to make your grandma's pants. <laughs> and that's all you're going to make, right? <laughs> I'm not going to do any knickers or thongs or G-strings. We're just going to make, like, grandma's pants. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Good night, Jeremy. Yeah, night, Jeremy. Hello, Emily Good Chambers. Good night, Jeremy. And hello, Ed. Oh, that's disturbing. <laughs> but you're right, though. It's like, why only 40%? Please, for the love of God, give us better stuff. Yeah, you yeah. apparently get ripped off for everything Chris Beaton in Canada. Seems to be the case. Uh, Except I like the 1608 Bush Mills. Um, it's good, Karen, before. I like it. The Black Bush, especially. Now, the regular Bushmills is fine. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, I like Bushmills itself. I like, you know, regular Bushmills, regular Gemmas. They're fine. They're nothing great. Um, you never look at Bushmills the same? Especially, <laughs> yeah. especially, I guess, in Ireland. Depends what bar you walk in, whether they have Bushmills or they have Jameson. Just don't ask for the wrong thing in the wrong bar. It's going to end poorly. Yeah. And I think, as you know, Jameson's Catholic and Bushmills is uh, Protestant. So they've said. Don't ask in the wrong bar for the wrong whiskey. So, what I will say though, I love the elegance of this Bushmills. I mean, it's just yes, like 
Sophia Loren or Bridget Bardot in an evening gown, elegant. Yeah. Just, yeah. And there's this very, very prominent milk chocolate note that I always get mid-palate that always surprises me with this. I just, yeah, I love it. Mm. Well, I think we lost Will and Sarah. They're frozen. Are they frozen? Yep. They'll pop back in. So, well, while they're frozen, we, uh, I'll pour, I don't, I have the 10 just in the other room, so I'll pour this 21 year mature that, three woods in what? Oloroso Sherry, Bourbon, and Madeira. Madeira, yeah. That stuff oh. is jammy. Like, red fruit jam all day every day yeah this thing blew my mind because you know prior to having the 10 the 16 and the 21 i was mostly had either the regular bush mills or the uh the black bush and the red bush i'm like eh, they're fine nothing great nothing bad but nothing great yeah but then you get these you're like holy crap okay so this is an older one this is a 2015 that had been sitting on an old liquor store shelf that nobody wanted they discounted I'm like, um, I'll take it. Yes, please. <clears throat> they had a bunch of stuff in there just like, like nobody ever wants this old Scotch and Irish stuff. I'm like, I'll take all of it. That'd, that'd be fine. Yeah, like... You want to take 60, 70 bucks off a bottle? Fine by me. Hell yes. Yeah, so I think this thing was like, yeah, it was like 60 bucks off. Wow. I'm like, yes, please. And then I found another place that had it a couple years later, and they had it off, had like 150 off. They're like, no one buys it. Do you want these for a hundred dollars? Well, yes, absolutely. At that price, you'd be kind of insane. Yeah. I can only imagine when this must be out of a barrel. Or I would love to go to Bush Mills and say, Can I please, for the love of God, try this one on out of a barrel? Yeah, and the whole thing is I'd like to go there and just kick somebody up the rump and say, put it out at more strength. Oh. <laughs> Mm. That, that's right. That's what Ed says. That that's why they put the peace wall up to stop the fans of Middleton and Bushmills from fighting. This is some world is Totally, Ed. I'm sure we'll get right on that. Don't yep. tell anyone that in Ireland, though. <laughs> Pretty sure we'll never see it ever again. Yeah. Oh funny man. In America, not funny in Ireland. That's it. Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, exactly. I, I, like Arthur says, I think the IRA would disagree. I think they would. Yeah, they would. And it's very interesting that uh, you bring that up because uh, my father's side of the family, they were all Ulster Unionists. And uh, my great-grandfather was a black and tan. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, the, the old guard of that side of the family, they were, you know, Protestant, the red hand of Ulster. Oh, yay. So, mm. whereas my my grandmother's side is Irish Catholic, so yeah. Oh my gosh, this Bushmills is amazing. This twenty one. Just imagine what it would oh. be if, even at forty six. It's so frustrating. Mm. And that's magic. And that is just magic. Yeah, I can only imagine how much better. Yeah, like I say, even at forty six percent, it'd be unbelievable. Yeah. Why not do it? Why? Uh, I've been I wonder what the reasoning is. I just I just don't know. I don't know if they've employed some you know meat-headed shit sack in accounting that goes we need to maximize every bottle and every dollar and whatever. It just probably. Ah. Uh, unfortunately, that's probably like you said. It's either that or like you said, no one's willing to take a chance and try anything else. But you think now, especially now. Be the opportune time to try something different in whiskey. Exactly. You know, with uh, Jameson has in Middleton, of course, it owns all that. Yeah. Not the Madness series, which is all their hey, let's do this crazy crap and all these different woods and stuff like. But it was about that amazing video when they're over there about all that stuff. Yeah, I saw it, and you know what? Their chestnut cask, but still was unbelievable. It was like mm. oh. I tried. I don't remember which one I tried. I tried one of them in the vault, and it was really good. The Method of Madness I tried. Okay, so Ben Stahl wants to know, what do you think about Tullamore Dude? Uh, Tullamore, they make great stuff. I mean, the Phoenix, uh, the four, before that, yeah, yeah, the fourteen-year-old was another one that I really enjoyed too. Um, 
even their volatile or do. Yeah, even their basic stuff is good. Yeah, the basic yeah. stuff's fine. But which I tried first, I was a little sad on it. I was like, it's not bad, but it's not. It tastes like Irish whiskey. But then exactly. I was at a bar and tried this bad boy, the Phoenix. Yeah. This is probably this the besides Sexton, this thing, the Phoenix, is what blew my mind for Irish. I'm like, holy crap. So actually I've never opened this before. I've only had this at a bar. So I'm gonna open this up for you guys tonight. So the Phoenix comes at fifty-five percent. So it's a hundred and ten proof bad boy. Oh, and this thing is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, tell them more. Anything that's age stated or the Phoenix from them yeah. is freaking phenomenal. Yeah, the 14 is my favorite age stated from them right now. So. Yeah, now Spencer does have a good point that let's be impressed someone actually makes a great 40%. Valid point. Okay, yeah, good. Absolutely. Oh, they're back. They can they're back, yep. Yeah. Okay. You're back. Hello. Who's the state internet? No, and I, I think Spencer has a good point. I mean, I I don't like, like, I'm not a person that will chase proof. And yes, you know, they make great stuff at 40, but my problem is that they're just so conservative. They don't do anything else. Agree, for sure. So. What is this? Arthur says that free Irish will never bow before the English crown if the show Archer is believed to be accurate. I don't think that's a question. There's... They're not going to. That doesn't take a show to tell me that. It not just depends. Now. It just depends on what part of Ireland you go to. This is true. It's right along. So we're opening up this Phoenix. That's a good pop. Yep. All right. Let's see what we got here. All right. So I want to move on to some single malts. Um, I know that this is one you've been wanting to really try, Matt. The uh, Turconal, the 10 year single malt Madeira cask yes, finish. Please. I want to try that one really bad. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And there's the bacon kitty. There he is. As oh, you can He's not going to sit down, too. So I just bought this bottle about three months ago, and you can see I've probably been mm -hmm. through quite a bit of it. So. <laughs> Apparently, you really like it. This is my third bottle. Holy so. shit. Okay, then. Then yes. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I've ever seen of Try and Call that I have, that I bought both I could find, is the regular one and then the 16-year uh, bourbon cast. The only so two I've ever been able to get a hold of. I mean, I've never seen the, anything else. Look at the color on this thing. Seriously, like, that's insane. Just, just yeah. So and that's... Yeah, it must be the Madeira, obviously, doing that. But that's very cool. I have a regular Triconal. Oh, uh, the regular's quite nice, Spencer. Oh. I really like it. It's good, yeah. It's a, it's a great beginner's single malt. So. Nope, not that. We take tiny sips and drink a lot of water and eat bacon. Yeah, John, lot, lots of water, tiny Glencairn, tiny pores. Yeah, yeah. And then plus, we don't finish most of these guys. We dump a lot of this pours. These go into a blend glass. Or an yes. infinity bottle. Yeah, we uh -huh. don't. And then it gets infinity dumped into glass. a bottle at the end of the night. We don't finish all of this. It, that, because that's exactly what happened. We have jobs, you know, real ones, unfortunately. We have to go to. I would love to do just whiskey all the time. And maybe oh, someday, yeah. God willing, that is the case. But right yeah. now, I love to be an accountant, which is not that fun. But it is what it is. Oh, hey, there's right Tereth, the Canadian whiskey smith. How's it going? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. What is the correct good. pronunciation of it, Donald? Uh, so, Turconnell. Turconnell. Yeah, Turconnell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, usually um, when uh, you're pronouncing Irish uh, names, you're supposed to do it as fast as possible, I've been told. <laughs> so, Turconnell. Turconnell? Yeah, Turconnell. basically. So basically, I've learned how to pronounce almost all my Irish cues from Donald because before they were, I was completely wrong in basically all of them. So, so here's what the regular one looks like, guys. Yeah, and I've also got uh, the 15 Madeira, which I'm also really Ooh. looking forward to pouring. So sounds good. Yeah, and I also have the 16 here. 
as well. So very nice. I yeah. like the normal. The normal one's really yummy. Yeah, I was really excited when I found this one. That actually Logan oh. picked this up for me up in in, uh, in Waco. That was exciting to try. Yeah, that's so good. I thank mean, God for for whiskey runners. That's all I know. If you could imagine a buttered tea biscuit with loads of like grape jam and raspberry or red currant jam on mm. top, and yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah buttered biscuits. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is smells well. awesome. This regular one Something that runs through that one for sure. Ooh, this is good. Oh yeah. They no, they cur rolls. they currently make my uh, favorite uh, Irish okay. single malts. Cool. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Like everything they do is at least good. Some of it is just mind blowingly exceptional. Yeah. That is really good. The regular one is amazing. Yeah. I have yet regular to open the really 16 year bourbon cask. It's buried in the other room on purpose. Oh, that 16 year bourbon cask is a tropical fruit bomb. Oh, I'm going to love it. You see, that's the thing. What I find with really good Irish is. Is the tropical fruits on them are yep. mind blowing good. Well, the yeah. older they get. Yeah, yep. the older ones are so good. So much tropical fruit. It's a fruit salad. Yeah, thankfully oh, I have I have it here next to me, so mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah. There's so many great Irish whiskeys are out there right now. <laughs> there there so are. Who makes the, uh, this anyway? Is they're not their own distillery, right? So yeah, so Cooley Kilbegan. Oh, it's Cooley. Says in the bottom. Yeah, Cooley yeah. says in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Cooley. It answers that question. And it's uh, double distilled and not triple distilled. This stuff. Okay. Ooh. So, yeah. In fact, um, Method and Madness, the uh, range at Middleton, they're going to be doing a double distilled pot still Ooh, that's sometime this year, apparently. Very. So, be really interesting to see what becomes of that because I think it'll be mind-blowingly good with uh, all those extra compounds left from the double distillation. I bet right. it'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so I guess Teresa, she's going to pull a black adder Irish. That sounds awesome. I love black adder in general. I've never had a black adder Irish, but I'd love to see what you think of that. That sounds really good. Black adder Irish. Wow. I do love black adder. Yeah, they make great stuff. They do. Mm. Her not so much. Me. That peat reek. Oh, that peat reek is amazing. Oh, that peat reek is so good. I think I'm gonna have the peat reek. Which black adder uh -huh. was available in Texas? Those black adders really? came from Kentucky. It was barrel char. It wasn't peat. Yeah, but it still had floaty things in it. It had floaty things in and it. And it, it was like awesome. Mass. No, Tasting it was like some sticky dry degrees. It is amazing. Smelled like ass too. Glory, you're, you're confusing See, ass with glory. And ass. next week on Monday, Brian's bringing us barbecue to go with our Midwest whiskey. Mm -hmm. so nice. Uh, oh, the red so, snake. I do love the red snake. That's good stuff. I've been looking at this Dunsville PX cask. Yeah, Belfast. Single malt PX cask, forty-six percent. I've been Ooh, looking at this thing cask. for a little while now. I really want to pour it. Yeah. Oh, the Dunsville. It's up here somewhere. There's too many whiskeys to look at. Let's see. Where the hell did I do it? Sounds ah. like story of your life, huh? There it is. I found it. You do. <laughs> there it is. So this is the PX Cast Ten Year Dunsville. Which the only reason I found this was because of you know Daniel on the whiskey Ooh. ball talking about this bread I never even heard of was Dunsville. So it comes in at forty six percent as well. Yeah. They're, they're, and I would uh, draw it away how good this is. Ooh, that's fast. <clears throat> hey Galen, good it to see is you. Uh, ripe raspberries and red fruits for days on this thing, and then behind that we finally start seeing some of the whiskey notes show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that, that PX stuff really has taken over. That's some of their best stuff there. Ooh, it smells great. Because their their three crowns peated was disappointing. Was just like, oh, whoa, yeah. this is boring. What was it? The Bushmills that was finished in? That was Oloroso. I looked it up. Right. I can definitely smell a difference. 
<laughs> the, the PX the, is the, the way yeah. fruitier, way yeah, sweeter way, smelling. And yeah. Really good. And it was not expensive. I think I paid like 40 bucks for this. It wasn't expensive. Yeah, here when it came out, it was not cheap. It was like 110 bucks. Damn. So, yeah. Mm. You got like an Oloroso finish. That better. is delicious. Mm, can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I see, see this done until I pick it up. That is tasty. Yeah, so mm. I'm just going to do a little pour of uh, this 15 year old because, you know, again, I've been through a lot of it. Absolutely. So. And you deserve it, Donald. So, the, what I like about this 15 year old, though, is it's got this layer of richness that the 10 doesn't have. So basically, you can do a direct comparison to see exactly how the malt ages with uh, being finished in both, both in Madeira casks. It's great. Yeah, it's interesting to see the difference for sure, I'm sure, in five years. Yeah, because you get a lot more of the barrel notes in this 15 than you do in the 10. Okay. So, yeah, oh, that's so pretty. Sometimes I wish they could make like an Irish whiskey scented uh, cologne or perfume. <coughs> yeah, me. Arthur, actually, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, Getting a wine for every bottle. category and trying it, it's a good idea. Yeah. Make like an infinity bottle for cologne, spray it before you go out. Yeah. 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 Riding the subway, people smell whiskey. And they're like looking at you and it's like. Think you're drunk. Yeah. Alcoholic. Yeah. There. But at least they'll leave you alone and move there away. So. No, nah, man, it's just my natural scent. Yeah. I just smell this good. Yeah, I have them. Yep. Yeah, DJ, one more. My was was what I had a few years ago of Irish. Then, like I said, then I started. Then I found that it was Irish I really liked, and then it kind of went off on a different tangent. tangent and now it's over a hundred different Irish. So it's all good. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, Irish has always comprised the bulk of my collection. I mean, I keep mostly uh, a few bottles of my favorite scotches, and then a few exploration bottles. And recently, I was started doing that with bourbon mm. so yeah and of course the obligatory bottles of canadian whiskey so of course. Mm -hmm. yeah it's all that canadian mist right oh yeah <laughs> god <laughs> bless brown form oh. the flavored shit right <laughs> apple oh yeah or crown royal peach, crown, crown royal peach or apple you yeah yeah I we'll figured that'd be just up your alley, no? Ugh. I'll tell you. Yeah, the Crown Royal Black was the actually black decent. The Black wasn't that bad. I like the they, Black. The Black's good. They actually have one here that's bottled at 45% that's an LCBO exclusive. Mm -hmm. It's nice. called the, the Blender Select. So they mm -hmm. got a bunch of blenders to figure out how to do different blends. and It's decent. <laughs> so out of blending. Yeah. <laughs> So no. it's decent, but the special editions though that come in the blue canisters, those are actually usually really good. Yeah, I think so, they have one now that's finished in French oak. That one's delicious. Ooh, so fine. I know a lot. Canadian broke. Canadian so, broke. <laughs> yeah, it's it's damn good. Yeah, and I guess uh, the the closest uh, oh, distillery to me is Forty Creek. Okay. So mm, yeah. Creek. I like Forty Creek. I like them. They do good stuff. Occasionally, uh, they do good stuff. But since John Hall left, oh, I didn't know he left. Oh. Yeah, I think they were bought over by Sazerac a few years ago, and he left. Oh. So, like their um, Confederation Oak, used to be much better than it is now. That's unfortunate. So, yeah. I did not realize that. <laughs> Eric wants to know, Donald, what's your favorite Canadian whiskey? Oh, I'd have to say right now, the Goodrum and Ward's 11 Souls was one of my favorites. And this current year's J.P. Weiser's 23. Mm. 
because it's just like yeah yeah it's a it's a maple cream donut i love it just right. boom yeah Let's see and ben wants to know how do you deal with the lcbo does he get do you get a lot of bottles from europe and alberta or overpay at the lcbo so i get a lot of bottles from europe and alberta and i only pay at the lcbo if the price ranges are within everywhere else because sometimes sometimes i can get bourbon here cheaper than in the u.s like the four rows yeah four rows a single barrel apparently is like three bucks cheaper here than in many areas of the u.s hmm. so interesting yeah but, but for scotch no bloody way because our bag 10 is like a hundred bucks a bottle here oh, oh, 50 yes, bucks here so no yeah yes that's crazy yeah i wouldn't be buying that either oh well, we can't move no. to canada no well when you figure you're paying about almost 80 percent tax on the bottle yeah, it's uh, sixty-one and a half percent the alcohol tax here in Ontario, and then you've got the government sales tax of thirteen percent, then right. the environmental tax, and then the volume tax, and then Sorry, la, la 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 la. I'm the same. She said you had the sorry tax and the a tax too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But That's not really, because really you can't get mad about it. That's really ridiculous though yeah we're not moving to canada no we're not moving to canada besides the i guess breeze today I well i guess we got to pay for that health care somehow right right um, that's true yeah dj11 wants to know if you think the writer's tears cash strength is worth the money yes absolutely um i think it's a vast improvement over the regular one and it just intensifies all those great flavors you get in the regular copper pot and turns them up to 11. it's just yeah mm -hmm. that's awesome all right so in alberta let's see my next pour i'll do one more single malt um the this bad boy which i just love oh yeah the mizanara yeah this stuff is just oh when i saw it out on the shelves here again i immediately just was like yes please fell into the cart so yeah just great let's see so don um jason the master draw wants to know do you think we'll see more cash strain in Irish on 2020? And what are your opinion of the trends in Irish for 2020? Well, I think we will see a trend towards more cask strength. I think some of the trends in Irish whiskey are a bit concerning, just given that you see people like Teeling rushing out of pot still. Or even, you know, when you look at Dingle, they, they rushed out their pot still after a minimum amount of time or year even, yeah so yeah there are some concerning signs about what's going on in irish whiskey but i will say some of the encouraging signs are also that you see a lot of producers producing blends at 46 and not chill filtering and doing all those things true which is so nice. the, right so the big boys have to catch up now because they're going to get left behind because if you know you're Jameson and you're producing this 40% blend or Bushmills where everything's 40%, you're going to get left behind. Yeah. So I, I think they're going to have to up their game. I agree. Uh, yeah, I mean... When you said earlier, you were, you were pretty darn excited about uh, what's going to be happening with um, oh Waterford. Uh, oh, yeah. As, yeah. as are we... Yeah, Waterford. Do you, think gonna have, do you think they're going to have product out, or do you think they're going to wait? I would hope they would wait. Actually, We're at what four years now? Yeah, I I would hope they would wait. Yeah. And just keep pushing out gin and vodka and whatever until they can produce something of, especially if they're doing a single pot still. 
yeah. then they need to wait at least another three years. Because anytime I've had really young pot still, it's been piney, resinous, just generally unpleasant. Like how I would imagine sucking back on a bottle of pine salt. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Just no thanks. Man, it does not sound great at all. No. What's next? Okay, so Benjamin wants to know, you think we'll ever see single barrel releases more independent bottlers of Irish? There's actually a lot of yeah. those now. Yeah, there is. And in fact, Irish whiskey up until the 1960s was pretty much all done by independent bottlers. Mm -hmm. That's how the Mitchell family got involved with the spot whiskeys. The very first Irish whiskey uh, that was bottled by the distillery was the Jameson Crested Ten. So, yeah. Yeah, because Red Breast was the same way. That was a yeah. private bottler. Exactly. So, Ireland has a very deep and rich history with independent bottlers. And they would have people from the distillery going out to do quality checks on the bottles to make sure they weren't being tampered with or adulterated. So, yeah. A J.J. Corey right now is probably one of the most prominent independent bottlers. So... Well, we got a Freed's first time here from China. Welcome. That's awesome. I don't know. We've had anybody from China in here. That's awesome. Cool. I have no idea what time of day it is in China at this point where we're at. That's cool. Night, Trey. Good. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Middle of the day, I would guess. That's cool. Man, it's useless knowledge. Right. <laughs> it's 726 a.m. It's what? There you go. Okay. Answers our question, then. Tomorrow. Cool. That's very cool. He's in the future. He's in the future. He's talking to him from the future. Amazing. Oh, so, why don't you tell him what the uh, Mizunara is since you're drinking that Mizunara? I'm going to go grab it real quick while you tell him that. Oh. Yeah. So, this is the Glendale 13 year Mizunara finished. And it is just a cracker jack. This thing is just wonderful. And they finish it, of course, in Japanese Mizunara casks. And I have to say, because it's twelve thirty in the afternoon. No, damn it. Uh, <laughs> man. It's, it's still tomorrow. So, yeah. So I have to say that uh, this is one of my very favorites right now. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, just yes, please, all day. Right there. I mean, we will have a whole lot longer before we're going to be signing off. Um, I think we're going to move on to some Middletons and finish our night off with a, a, a trifecta of Middleton or some yeah. Powers maybe first. I don't know. I got well, Powers, John Lane, and Powers Gold Label. Well, I'm going to do the Powers in a couple of minutes, but uh, I would probably do the Gold Label before the John's Lane. All right. Uh, well, let's, we'll, we'll start with that then while you're, while you're <clears> sipping <throat> on the Middleton and while Matt's grabbing the Middleton. He's got it yet? Not Middleton, the Mizanara, sorry. Yeah. Well, I didn't find that one. It's in the other room. I grabbed the, uh, the Irish, uh, the seven year Black Pit single malt. The Black you that one at all, Donald? Yes, I have. What that do you think of that? One? That one's far superior to the double barrel. Oh, the double barrel, so, I do not like. No. Me I tried either. that. It was not good. I've never had this one. I'm so opening it up for the first time. So, so the, the Black Pit uh, is going to be much richer, and you're not going to get any of that nasty kind of sharp, shiny notes you get in the double barrel. Open for the best, because that double barrel was not good. Nope. Now, have you had the... Uh, I saw they make some gin as well. That was interesting. I haven't yeah. tried them, but I saw them at the store. I haven't tried them, so. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Hey, William Devilar. Hmm. When did he sneak in here? Sneaky guy. I just saw his name, though. Very, very sneaky. Indeed. So this is good, but yeah, I like that Mizanara much better. Oh, the Mizanara is just. Oh, hell. It's, it's in the same room. It's probably a different box right next to it, but this is the first one I found. This is good, though. A lot of uh, cherries on it. Yeah. Like 
crazy cherry. Did you drink ours too? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say I ain't got no cherries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you drinking, Matt? The Glen Black Rose Rose. Seven Year Black Pits it's Single Malt. It's, it's finished in Black Pits. Apparently, it's a porter barrel. Oh, that's yep. pretty good though. <laughs> I do like that. I don't think I paid a lot for it. I think it was like 40, 45, something like that. Wasn't bad. Cool. <laughs> Under next to hate the sneakiness. <laughs> Great movie. Yeah, this this Mizanara cast is probably one of the best Irish single malts on the market right now. Agree. <clears throat> so oh, there's Dram Band. Thank you, ma'am. How's it going? So what you guys? Yeah. So what did you guys think of the Powers Gold label? The nose is far, better than the taste. Yeah, the nose is far superior to the taste. Uh, we we poured the Powers Gold label is what we just poured ourselves is what we're sitting here sipping on. Okay. And the nose is actually really beautiful. Um, but the taste you get a lot of white pepper. Okay. Like a, yes. I can, I can get behind white pepper in that. There's there's definitely a spiciness in yeah. there that I was kind of having a hard time placing. It wasn't. Yeah. Jalapeno, so yeah, definitely no. white pepper I could get behind. Yeah, because uh, it really showcases off the spicy aspect of the pot still base. I find with Powers, they're way more spicy than all the other Irish whiskeys. So. Hmm. Now, I, I think, like, I like Powers. Um, that John Lane, though, that thing is a different animal. Oh hell yeah! This isn't my favorite of the evening. No, that's um, it's, but it's interesting it's still. It's different. Yeah, so it's interesting and it's different, but it's not. Yeah, so the, the well, the powers. Ooh. I all, I always find that you get the the essence of what the spice and pot still is with powers. Okay, so even the the signature, the three swallow, the John's Lane, there's always this underlying vein of spice. Yeah, so. I guess William Devilar is drinking the Three Swallows right now. I do like that one. That's a good one, and it's cheap. Yes, and you know what? That actually helped settle my decision. So perfect. Look, look, no, no, you. Yeah, there's a lot of gray in the regular powers, though, for sure. Yeah, well, I've, I've got. I will tell you though, one of the best whiskeys I've ever had was a 17-year-old Power Single Cask. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my God! Just yes. I love the variation you can get with a single cast. They were absolutely, really, really, absolutely incredible. Yep, agreed. Same, same stuff distilled on the same day, and yet this cast that was right next to that cast tastes completely different. It's really, really amazing. Yeah. Ah. All right, I was telling Sarah, Matt, we don't have a heck of a lot longer. Uh, we're going to run through some of these fun ones. Uh, we're going to run through the Powers John Lane next. It's a 12-year-old at 46%. That John's Lane is one of my favorite ever pot stills. Yeah. 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 We're going to go through tree. some uh, really fun yeah. Uh, yeah. Middleton products after that. So. <laughs> DJ one one. This is Sorry, not the channel to shorten your list on. No. We, no. we will expand your list and cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. You want to go on that yep. list? We got you covered. That's our exactly. that's our channel. That's what we do. Yeah, we're really yeah. good at that. If you're trying to find like that one Irish you should buy, that's not for that's not what we do. Sorry, not no. sorry. We help you invest all of your yeah. money in the other hands. We give you options. We do give right. you, we give you options. lots of options. We 22 do. of them. <laughs> 22 <laughs> options of different liquid you could invest your hard-earned money in. I mean, in. you know, some some notes may appeal to you, some may not. This way it helps you limit between the 22. That's yeah, right. Exactly. We've done at least like 25, 26 at this point in the year. So it's all good. So uh, Powers John Lane is what's going in my glass next. Uh, Sarah's team. Mm. I know I opened this on a live stream. Is it a live stream or it was a one night late we're on Discord. I don't remember which one at this point in time. They open the map up and everything. It's a really cool box. It comes some yeah, stuff. I think that was on a live stream. Yeah, I think it's, it was a live stream. I think you're right. It, was, it is mind-blowing good. It's got the um, 
account of Alfred Bernard's visit to the distillery in 1886 as well. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So good. I'll pull it out real quick. So what I'm talking about. Yeah, so if you buy, it's actually not that expensive, like 60 bucks. You get this really cool brochure that comes with the John Lane. Let me pull it out for you guys. It's really quite neat. Yep. We get to the whole story from Oh wow. Alfred Bernard. Oh, master distiller. It's very cool. No, he was a uh, Alfred Bernard was a historian of yep. uh, distilleries. So then, yeah, it gives you this awesome picture wow. of the distillery. Yep. How cool is that from his book? Which is very cool. That's really cool. This has got to be some of the best history I've ever gotten with the whiskey. It smells a lot better than the other. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. I really like this whiskey a lot. So I also have the signature, and I have, what's the other one? I got three swallows. I think one other one. I don't know which one it is. Those would probably be the three: the three swallow, John's Lane, Gold, and uh, then you've got the signature. signature. Yeah. Yeah. Four. I know I've got four. Yeah. I will say that that John's Lane, every time I take a, a sip of it, it's a soft baked ginger cookie. Yeah. Orange marmalade, butter, and allspice. Those those four ingredients just pop to mind right away. Are we allowed to say ginger in 2020? Yes, we are, courtesy of... Uh Josh Galladay and Robert and Jonathan Licorice, so yes. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, Eric, the Eric, 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 Eric. He, he, he spoke, or Evanson, he spoke too soon. Did they run out of bacon? Hopefully they aren't pummeling each other. Again. Ha haven't heard smack yet. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I do like this oh, one a lot rich. more than the uh, other. Silly you, shoulder. Silly, silly kitty cat. Dude. Dude. Like, <coughs> what's your bacon? He's more of a Here. good knife than he has been in a while. Yeah, that one is one of my top Irish pot stills, period. Like, like one of my... Said, you'd be disappointed if there wasn't some kids screaming here. Yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be Monday. That's true. It meant to be oh. challenged. <laughs> I have not heard that one. That's pretty funny. I though. haven't either. That's excellent. We'll, we'll have, to have to ask to, Josh about that next time. I'm just going to have to tell him that next time. Yep. Yeah. going to have to call him oh. that. He's been oh, that's good. <coughs> Isn't it? Yeah, what was that you got yeah like that that's one? yummy. Yeah, it's one of my very favorites. It's really rich and deep yeah. flavor without being overly proofed, right? We're talking about 46%. Of 46, it's not, yeah. So it's not yeah. a big punch in the face as far as proof goes, but it still has a really, really rich, yep. deep it's depth really of complexity. It's really dark, dark fruit. It's whenever, more than it tastes like, or seems like it should be. Yeah, whenever I have relatives going to the U.S. or I go to the U.S., there's a standing order for a bottle of that because it was available here and then it just disappeared and it gotcha. was like mm, you know yeah so yeah so well i mean i can i can understand that standing order this is beautiful absolutely you are a big image <laughs> not you donald no this no. one bacon mooch Yep. The bacon mooch, aka the cat. Well, at least the other mooch is sitting off camera waiting patiently. This one's just up in our faces. <coughs> well, it's, it's the real mooch. I know it's what yeah. we talked about. I, I think I forgot to give it to Will. Was this uh, Grenore single grain? Uh, eight years. Oh, green ore. Yeah. I the day about this one. If you wanted to talk about this one real quick. So that one is my very favorite uh, Irish single grain. I absolutely love it, and I can't get it here anymore. Oh, that's too it, bad. It disappeared. Yeah, I only found this. The Class 6 got this. No one else carries it. The Class so, 6 got a bunch of them. 
I actually no. prefer that over the teeling single grain, just because there's this really, really rich layer of orchard fruit that just poof. Oh, yeah. Well, have a good lunch there for each first time. It smells really nice. Yeah. It's it's awesome. <clears throat> oh, that is good. Yeah, I've had I think I might have tried this one before really? a couple years ago. It's the best Irish single grain on the market right now, honestly. Quite good. Yeah. I want to grab that tealing and compare it. Because. Wow. So I just poured my John's Lane right now. So nice. Yeah. I enjoyed that one a lot. I did too. That was very, very yummy. A lot yeah. better than what was that? The regular powers? Yeah, the regular yeah, powers not nearly as good. No, it's it, it's, it's a, a blend. blend. It's a bottom shelf blend, right? So yeah. Right. I I do I do have to say though that this John's Lane, I mean, for the money, it can rival older whiskeys yeah yeah i i it's that mm -hmm. those deep dark fruity notes yeah yeah that you get in the older whiskeys yeah the depth you're not wrong uh -huh. and not only that it's the that ginger cookie note that i keep getting that just keeps bringing me back there's that word that, again yeah ginger <laughs> all right i'm gonna move on to some middleton uh, me and Sarah got a little less than 20 minutes left. Oh, did you not? Um, did you guys ever drink from the Pog Castle? No. I gave you three of those. You should get to those first before you go to Milton. Only makes logical sense. It's only logical. It's only logical, he says. Uh, All right, well, we're going to do this quickly. I want to do it in the wrong order. All right, 12 in your glass. We're good. I'm going to sleep through work tomorrow anyway. Heard that. <laughs> 14 in my glass and we'll have a Monday off is just rough. No, it's it's so hard. I know terrible things you have to take on Monday off. Having to get back in the swing. I don't want to. Tell me the difference between the 12 and the 14 uh, of those two, real quick, Matt. Um, no, let's not go one. You got the other. Hold on. Let me grab one. Why did you take the opposite? The 14 is a triple cask, right? And the 12 and is double. Twin wood. That's good. Kind of Twinwood, yeah. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is bourbon and old cast. Papaya? And mango. Yeah. Mango with mango. Which one is that? The 14. That's small, it's just bourbon. The 14 okay. is like papaya right. and mango. They have the 21 as well. Do we do? Yes, it's back. We do. No, I don't want that one. Yeah, no, I do it. Oh, it's the same on the, the palette. Yeah. You're lucky they got the 21. Only 1,500 bottles came to the States. Papaya, wow. papaya and mango on the 14. Ooh. There's tropical fruits on the 12 as well. Yeah, but I distinctly distinctly pick out those two. But yeah, as soon as I saw a, a store in the whiskey wash, William ordered a bottle of the 21 for us a couple years ago. Yeah. Or it's got more just for the papaya. Yeah, no one's got more mango. Oh, that one has mango. That one has mango. That one has mango. I told you. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. What's the best way to clear your palate? For me, it's water and bacon. Does seem to work well? Water and bacon. Bacon, yeah. especially the little burnt ones. The, the clear. little edges that are like nice and crispy yep. and burnt. Like and that. Uh, the guts, the good stuff. To clear your nose, smell the inside of your arm. True. Like that. I, I tend to use bison jerky. Also so sounds delicious. Yeah, I Brian's like to go meat high fat. That's what you want. You want meat, yeah. you want meat that has a high fat content, preferably um, heated to a really high temperature uh, to caramelize some of those fats. Was Brian saying Glen Range Ten is the best way to clear your palate? <laughs> <laughs> I, I also find Coming that from the vodka king of works well. Okay, interesting. I would have vodka thought it works good paper. because it's a clean alcohol and has. Theoretically, no uh, a clean one that has no flavors. You don't want to use you don't want to use a weeded vodka. It's a regular corn but, based. Or but potato from the vodka king best. of uh, yeah, the king of uh, Booker's, wouldn't you expect him to say something like Baker's or Knob Creek? <laughs> That's true. All right, so 
I'm going to oh, yeah, I pour. The water. There we go. So that'll be my I next pour. The, the Chateaulana. Oh, that's so yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Tell about that one. That's a special bottle. I'm yeah. Sure. So this one is uh, the Chateau Montalena Green Spot, finished in ex Zinvendel barrels. So I prefer that over the yellow spot. That's my favorite of all the spots that I that I have in my the house. Chateau, yeah. yeah. And I have my favorite here in a small sample bottle, mm -hmm. the Leoville Bart, which is also amazing. Yeah. So I don't have the Bartone, otherwise I, I would probably tell you the Bartone, but I don't have one. So Chateau Montalena, it is. Okay, so yeah. Oh, and it was a crazy mango note. You're not it, on the fourteen. It was yeah, a very it's very crazy. prevalent yeah. mango, mango on yeah. top of papaya. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is so tropical. It's so tropical. It's crazy. I'm, I'm excited yeah. to try the. Like, the I've got several of uh, those that I've never even opened that are different casts that we'll get to at some point. Well, for tropical fruit, I have to say the uh, Tricono 16 is probably the most tropical fruit whiskey I've ever had. Yeah? Yeah. Like just pineapple, mango, papaya, passion fruit, everything. See, just that was the Teeling 24. That was Teeling, yeah. The Teeling 24 for us was just tropical yeah, fruit. Have you had that one at all, that Teeling 24 at all, Donald? Yes, I have. The 24 is, yeah, oh. it's a road to Damascus whiskey. Yeah, it is. I just remember we tried it upstairs. We had the event. And then later in the night, we sat around Julian around the dining room table, the three of us. We tried and, it again. And just kept drinking it till almost was gone. And then he took home the, the little bit that was left in the bottle. Hey, why not? He like, hey, you he's like, you can have as much as you want. I'm like, oh, thank you. It's so freaking good. I mean, most other people would uh, see Jesus floating in the sky. We see whiskey bottles, so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that definitely was yeah. one of the highlights <laughs> of the year. For sure. Ben needs to pay attention. That's so good. He wants to know, Donald, which one you said was is, is tropical. So the Tricono 16. The Tricono, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't answer that one for you. Sorry, Ben. So, and then also the I told him the 14. The connect a pogi. Did you get the 21 out yet? Yeah, it's in the glass now. Yeah, and it's really, really good. <laughs> Again, we're talking about um, we're talking about a lot of tropical fruits, but not as much as the 14. So, uh, this, this has... was interesting for me when we first opened this well, about at this point over a year ago. It was not good at all. It was like the most disappointing 20 year I've ever had. It really? took six months to open up. It was just a beating. Yeah, oh, and me and my brother were like, "What the hell is wrong with this whiskey?" This this has about the equal amounts of the twelve year. And then tropical. finally, right. not, not nearly the not up. nearly the fourteen year. It's day. not like a mango bomb. No. But it has a slight papaya. It's got a slight bit of like the passion type fruit. Like right, and a little fruit. bit of pineapple. Oh. Like pineapple, pineapple But it's brine. not the same as that 14 year. No. Yeah, no, so. This papaya is like crazy different. Just so Ben Demon Hunter knows, this is what it looks like. There you, there go. you go. So. Mm. Mm. It mm -hmm. tastes mm -hmm. good still. Mm -hmm. I think I like the 14 better. I like the 14 yeah. better. I like the 14 the best out of those. Like, uh, yeah. Well, and, and I say like the 14 best. The, the 21 is probably the most interesting and the probably the most nuanced. The 14 yeah. to me was the most on that outlier stretch, right? And and that's what's fun uh, to me sometimes is having those whiskeys that lie <laughs> in those, uh, lie just a little bit outside of the norm of whiskeys uh, flavors. And that one does with that papaya note. Yeah. There's a 16 as mango. well, but we mango. didn't open yet that you can have another time. Have Which yeah. I like a lot too. So actually, I know the guy, the rep for these guys, and they're going to come on at some point for us. So nice. He's going to do that. And Jefferson and um, Gosling Rum. Nice. Should be, so we'll have them on for separate rum? nights with Jefferson and the, uh, the podcast. Well, that'll be fun. Have them on when? 
I don't know when, but I, oh. I know him at some point he'll be doing stuff for us, so. Dude! It'll be fun. You just All spill. Business. All Man. right, now we're moving on to Middleton. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. We got we got to get it done. It's like we got we got things. eleven minutes. Someone minutes. has to do it. Ten minutes before me and Sarah are signing off, so we're gonna try to get this done real quick. Um, yeah, we're we gonna start five off. Clock. Five o'clock in the morning. Middleton, very rare. All right. So we're going for like super special whiskeys. Yep. So this is comes in this. This is the six, 2016 uh, Middleton, very rare. Funny Why thing. Why don't you take it away, Donald? Tell them all about this awesome whiskey. So that is the 2016, uh, which was also my last bottle kill for Middleton. Donald, stop so, for just a second. You got a super big echo all of a sudden out of nowhere. Okay, let me have a look. Uh, Are we good? Yeah, I think you're we're good. good here. Yeah, you're good. Okay. okay, we're good. That was weird. That was weird. Go ahead. Really weird. So that, uh, of course, would be. Uh, the 2016 edition of Middleton Very Rare, which was my last bottle kill, and uh, that's going to have uh, a blend of uh, your grain and pot still, usually between 12 and 23 years old, 24 years old, somewhere around there. Jesus. Ooh. And so you'll see on the front of the bottle, you'll have uh, Brian Nation's signature crafted in. Mm -hmm. So. Basically, since 2013, he's been the one choosing the blend, and they produce a blend every year of different stuff. This year, the blend is between 12 and 34 years old. So, yeah. So, there's a good question. So, DJ11 says his Costco has a Middleton very rare and a Middleton 25. Which would be? Would you guys start with? Both are at 225. Wow. Ooh. I think I'd go with the two. For me personally, I'd probably choose the 25. Yeah. That's an amazing price for yeah. that girl yeah. whiskey. I would Absolutely. Go for sure. You're not going to see that yeah. under 300 most of the time. So yeah, I, I, I would buy that for 25. Yeah, that's what I'd go with. Yeah. 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 You can I afford both, get both. Yeah. But if you only pick one, get the 25 here. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Boom. That's like licking a stick of butter. I gotta move some freaking bottles here. The butteriness of that mm. is just, it's like, it's real butter. It's not like that tub butter shit. Yeah. It's the real deal. Yeah. That was salted. Mm -hmm. That was the last bottle of uh, very rare that I bought, actually, was a 2016, because 2017, 2018, they were just like, mm, they're good, but. Oh, Karen B. Ford is hooked on it. Nice. This is this is Butter rich, and buttery. Yeah. Ram. I get, mm. I get rain crackery. Yeah. And this is the crappy Middleton. This is good. <laughs> this is the crappy Middleton. Yeah, it is. It's basically the uh, Ireland's Johnny Walker Blue. Yeah. So. I'm a fan. Yeah. I yeah. This is significantly better to me than Johnny Walker Blue. It this is. is significantly better to me than Johnny Walker she, Blue as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, it used to be. Not so much anymore. This used to be a reasonable price. Now it's over two hundred. Jesus. Yeah. I think when I got this one, I think I lucked out. I think I only paid like one forty, one fifty, because I found it sitting at a store for like two or three years. Nobody wanted it. They had it on clearance. Yeah, it goes for about two hundred and fifteen bucks here, Canadian. So, and I'm still okay with paying that. Just oh, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I could totally drink this daily. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's got a rich, deep, complex flavor palette that I'm sure would change drastically over 30 minutes if it sits in your glass. That sounds yeah. beautiful. The taste Tonight, Brian, from Pit Face Barbecue. Brian will be here next week for Midwest Whiskeys. And with us at Sagamore next Tuesday, it's going to be a great, yeah, great yeah. time. I'll drink some, awesome. some whiskey and some great barbecue. Cheers, Brian. Cheers, Brian. Cheers, bud. Mm. That's like so good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, six minutes. Let's go. Middleton, Barry Crockett. Barry Crockett. Oh. Years. Now, hang on. Should I do the Barry Crockett first or the, well, I guess for proof purposes, we'll do the Barry Crockett part. Barry Crockett. Okay. 
Barry Crockett is one of my favorites. There is, it's just like being lost in a field of pear and apple blossoms. Just, yeah, this, this oh. is the best whiskeys there is in the world. Yeah. No doubt. Ooh, yeah. Absolutely. And I don't say that lightly. It really is. Yeah. It was a mind blowing yeah. experience when I opened it. So, this is a presentation on its own, guys. Oh, yeah. wow. so this yeah. is the Barry Crockett box. Yeah. I mean, this thing is a freaking beast. So, why don't you tell who yeah. Barry Crockett is? I guess that's probably the first. Uh, important part of this. Well, Barry Crockett used to be the head distiller at the Middleton Distillery, and he was the last um, actual uh, person born at the distiller's cottage. His father was a head distiller at the Middleton Distillery, so he was literally born into the distillery. And he, you know, his family has worked at the distillery for so long. And in 2013, he retired, handing it over to Brian Nation, the current head distiller. And they invited him to, and, you know, pick that whiskey. I mean, the pear blossom, the apple blossoms, the honey, the butter, just, oh. So, in Psalm School, there's actually a video about him that we watched. Yeah. And this is yeah. his whiskey that we watched during Psalm School. Which is very oh, cool. So yeah, so it slides in and it. out. It has a magnetic holder in there. Yep. It has this cool book that comes with it, with the, with the set in with leather bound. Yeah. I mean, this box alone is probably at least 50, 60 bucks. I mean, this is a beautiful present we grab this thing out of here. Um, he yeah. is unquestionably one of my whiskey heroes. Oh, no doubt. Because he kept uh, the single pot still style alive for so long while you know it was being abandoned basically yeah and then you had uh, this horrible you know horrible time in irish whiskey where they were rationalized down to two distilleries bushmills and jameson so yeah so here's barry crockett guys that's what he looks like the legend. Very cool. Oh, it tastes cool. even better than that, though. And it's yeah, a little it's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell, that's yummy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway, so this thing's 18 years old as well, guys. 46%. Oh, wow. I can totally get behind the pear and the apple. Yes. The pear is very strong. Yeah. It's it, palate. it is the most intense pear yes. that I've ever had on a whiskey. Just, it's like being lost in a pear orchard. And everything smells and tastes oh, of pear. Pears. Just yes. I like, like it. Yeah. And then at the end, it almost reminds me of the French dessert, the pear tart to tan, which is like an upside down pear pie with oh. all those lovely spices. Just, oh. That sounds really good. For real? Yeah. Is that like a French French thing or a Canadian French thing? Uh, French French. Hmm. Canadian French. I mean, Canadian French, you'd be like poutine, right? Which was invented in Quebec. And the whole That's story. My, yeah. That's where my grandmother's from. My grandmother's from Quebec. Jesus, that's young. Yep. Which is why I'm a little bit jealous right now that you have Middleton and I don't. Thank you, LCBO. Yeah. Sorry, Donald. <laughs> Someone deserves a beating. So okay. Matt put bottles out on the counter. I put little sample bottles in front of the things that I was like, ooh, yes, ooh, yes, 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 yes. To so. be truthful with you, I really can't be that jealous because I've been through two bottles so far. Mm. So Ah, that's fair. This is my first tasting of it. So, you know, I can be jealous of you in this situation. So, yeah. <laughs> that That is one of my very favorite whiskeys ever. So Yeah, that is, I, I can understand yeah. why. Um, again, with the exploration whiskey, it, it really has so much going on that you could go back to that time after time after time and find different things, find slight little nuances that you didn't pick up on before. Oh, absolutely. We're not adding water to these. I'm sure uh, water changes them drastically as well. Can you get me the water bottle that you took away from me? <laughs> Sorry. Spray the cat. Get the hell out of me. It works on all It works creatures. on, yes. 
Oh, Actually, creature. it doesn't work on the dogs. The dogs try to bite the water as it's coming at their face. <laughs> Absolutely. It even works on the kid. Yeah, it does work on the kid, though. Mm-hmm. All right, so. now we are going to move on because we're one minute until me and Sarah are supposed to leave, uh, which I don't think we're going to make this time, but that's okay. We're going to move on to Middleton's... The Dare Galish. Yeah. Yep, that's the, thank you, Donald. Uh, <clears throat> the Dare Galish. What he said. Uh, so, what uh, tree do you guys have? Uh, number one or number four? I gave him four. Okay, so four. Is I'm sorry, actual... that you have more than I'll grab one? one real quick, too. You. Hold me out. Crazy ah. man. That's what I was going to say. Crazy man. I was not going to call him a prick. That's not <laughs> what I was going to say. I knew he had not. tree. I was trying to be nice. Well, I knew he me. had tree one, so. He gave you tree four, and tree four, interestingly, is my favorite tree. So okay, well that's good to know. I, I like haven't, to I haven't <laughs> tried tree one though. <laughs> I haven't. Anytime I'm able to compare something. Yeah, A's and B's. We like A's and B's. A's and B's. I haven't tried tree one yet, so it's uh, one of the few trees I haven't tried. So, so the funny thing is, tree one comes in this. Shit. Very nice hard cardboard box. Tree four comes with this beautiful freaking box. Yeah. Wood box. So there's funny stories about this. Upgrade. I looked at this bo- I looked at this bottle for six months, going, Well, I don't pretty much have those in the store. What the hell am I gonna buy? And uh, I was like, you know what? Give me that bottle. I've been looking at it for six months, no idea what the hell it is, never had it, don't know anything about it. He's like, Some guy ordered it, and never picked it up. I'm like, okay. So we opened it in the store at Mirage. Oh my gosh. You opened that up so William could taste it after buying it from him? Top 10 whiskeys before he died. Man, you, you, you have got to be one of the nicest men I've ever this met in my it. life, Matt. Oh, I open stuff all the time with William. It's I know you do. You're, but you're yeah, seriously, guys, if you ever, there's only 102 bottles this in the world. Yeah. This is seriously top three whiskeys I've ever had in my life. That stuff could so probably. Because it it's almost gone. Yeah, you should. But I've sent this to a few other whiskey channels, and I know when uh, Jason, the Mash and Drum, was here, I gave him some of this. Blew his freaking mind. I gave him that some could... to Scott um, from uh, Scotch's Dummies. Some of this gone to Bill, some whiskey dick. And so that so, stuff could raise Lazarus from the dead. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's... So tell them the difference between tree one and tree four. So I think uh, they're what they're both. Um, between 12 and 23 at least although i've heard that tree one has up to his oldest 36 year stuff i in would there. not be surprised so yeah i mean and they're both bluebell forests so yeah because this the, the tree That's one nice. is grinnell's wood grinnell's wood yep yeah. yep yeah. balak and tobin estate virgin irish oak collection yeah, this is batch one, tree one. Oh, sorry, 104 bottles. Whereas this one, I can't is close the my mouth. Like this, Bluebell so Forest, Castleton, Blued in the State, Virgin Oak, and this is batch one, tree four, bottles about 246. So that bottle four, I will tell you, when I had it, uh, the tree four, it was like having a uh, peach or apricot or nectarine Danish. Apricot. Apricot. Apricot yeah. Danish. Yeah. Just yep. nailed the it. Creaminess, Freaking... the butteriness, just yeah. Check stop. Check like, stop. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Down in down in West Texas, uh, a little bit south of us, there's a little uh, Czech bakery. It's actually called West Texas. It's not like you know Yeah, the the, <laughs> the city name is West. Yeah. Uh, even though it's south of us. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> um it's um They've got a little check stop. This tastes like this tastes like a a, a Danish like they're pastries. This is, yeah. like they're, yeah. they're pastry. This is incredible. Yeah, I have a Polish market close by that does like plum yeah. and apricot and all these other Danishes in the summer. And instantly, I was just like, boom. Yeah, that this tree is four. apricot with a little bit of uh, breading, right? With that Danish breading, and this is a little yeah. bit of that cream cheese frosting. The doughy. The yep. doughy. But yep. no metallic cream cheese, right? Like this isn't. No. There's no sort of. Uh, so it's it's kind of like a, a deep, rich, um, 
the vanilla cream cheese. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's totally what I get on that tree for when I had it. Wow, this is rich. It is no. unbelievable. Oh. These are both John cash trains, too. Tree John one comes in, in the... at 115.8. Mm. Tree four comes in at 112.4. John wants to know in the chat, is there any whiskey that is collectible that you see oh. holding or growing up in value? Well, yes, but drink the damn whiskey. Yes, drink the bloody stuff. Don't go. Yeah, we're it. not about like collecting them around no. here. I, I have very few that are unopened for that reason beyond that I'm saving them for my kids' weddings. Other than that, they're getting all drinking. Yeah. Don't yeah, and, and you know, we open the special bottles too, but we savor them. Exactly. You know, we don't go we don't plow through it right then and there. Or we you, you know, share it all your friends occasion. some happy twenty and get rid of it. Also works. Right. Yeah. Or right. do what I do what I do. You know, I've got the birthday barbecue, so I bring out like thirty bottles of whiskey. Here you go. So yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Gosh. These are here's so here's good. some amazing things. You should go ahead and try them. Share yeah. with your friends. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah. every new exactly. bottle that comes into my house typically goes a sample goes over to my parents house for my dad and my sister-in-law to pretty much yeah. instantly, instantly try yeah. and if I mean, matt hasn't tried it it's going to go over there for, matt, there. for, matt, for matt to try because it's to we, share matt shares with us so much there's no reason for us not to you know yeah. immediately open and share wow. so. yeah all i gotta say is, like i said is just, before you die this you is know. yeah i i but, but like how can you, but how can you say that because this is what one of 104 bottles come on like that's I, not, that's not fair. But it's I so fair. Weird. But it's a true story. I think they're going to be putting out one more tree actually this year. Ooh, really? Tree ten. Ooh. Yeah. I need so, another tree in my life. Me I too. I like trees. Oh my gosh. I, I, I'm happy when Matt has more in his life because I get some. So yeah. Yeah, I yeah. would like to. I mean, there's not a lot of that first one. Left. left. No. Yeah, we're gonna review these actually probably next time we were right a couple two or three weeks, whatever. We'll review How these that? before they run out. Yeah, how much are they? Yeah. Uh, like right. two two thirty five, not that bad. All right, Matt, we're a little over two hours. Let's go ahead and sign it off for the evening if you don't mind. Uh okay. nineteen in the chat. All, All right. right. That so, is so fucking this was a good Irish night. Donald Yes, this was an amazing Man. Irish night twenty. Yeah. Five, whatever, so different Irish whiskeys or more we tried this evening. Yeah, that between all of us, we shipped like That's 40 something. Yeah, um, so thank you, Donald. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your all amazing expert knowledge on Irish whiskey. Thank you for having me. So, oh, definitely. Yeah, welcome anytime, my friend. Um, yes, indeed. Let's see what else we get. So, for tomorrow, we will be releasing the Baker's 13 year, guys. And it's mm-hmm. gonna be awesome. Yum, yum. And then yes, we will. Thursday. Mortlock 15, The Game of Thrones, Six Kingdoms will be yeah. coming out, which will be awesome. And then I guess next week we'll be having uh, Pat from My Whiskey Den will be on. We're doing Midwest whiskeys. He sent us a bunch of cool samples. we try trying. Nice. And then on Tuesday, we'll be, like I said, we'll be Sagamore with Brian from Pit Face Barbecue. There's some awesome barbecue and all the Sagamore, our Sagamore pick, and then all the other Sagamores. So that thank everybody for that hanging out here tonight with us and having a great time. This was an awesome night. Thanks yeah, again, Donald. This was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, Sagamore's not going to be online. That's a that's actually going to be at Mirage yeah. Uh, yeah. in the DFW area. If you yeah. need more information, email us at whiskeycrusaders3 at gmail.com, gmail. and we will be happy to get you more information on that. But we're going to be at Mirage Fine Spirits on, on that following Tuesday. Yeah, and we'll get it posted on uh, Instagram and Facebook, too. So I'll, I'll have the flyer put up, start having Correct. put it up. So everybody yeah. in the area can come join us that evening. I'd love to meet a bunch of Absolutely. you guys. It should be a great time. So, Fred Briss. Oh. All right, everyone. <laughs> really appreciate it. Cheers to all of you, and drink more Cheers, Irish. Folks. Any other great whiskey you enjoy. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. for better Irish Cheers. in your glass, man. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was a good one.